I'm Jane Weru. I'm the Executive Director of Akiba Mashinani Trust. Akiba Mashinani Trust is the urban poor fund that supports the Kenyan Federation of Slum Dwellers, the Mungano Wana Vijiji. Today, I'm going to share with you a story about the sanitation conditions of Mukuru Kwa Jenga and Mukuru Kwa Ruben. Mukuru Kwa Jenga and Mukuru Kwa Ruben were established in the late 80s and the early 90s when the land upon which they currently are situated was allocated to private corporations and individuals by the state for the purposes of development of light industries. The people who were allocated these lands never developed them. They just held on to them for speculative purposes. Over time, these lands were occupied by the urban poor because they did not have access to the land markets within the city. So they encroached on them. And today, these two settlements have about half a million people who live on them on about 500 acres of land within the city. Housing that was built in Mukurukwa Jenga and Mukurukwa Ruben was built by absentee structure owners. These were essentially business people who came in and for a small fee were given permission to build row after row of corrugated iron sheeting housing. In many instances, these houses did not have concrete floors and just had dirt floors. No sanitation was provided. The toilets that were provided, if any, were mostly pit latrines. There was no drainage. There were no roads and hardly any municipal infrastructure. So today we're in a situation where we have about half a million people living on 500 acres of land with next to no services. In the last few years, the land in Mukuru, Kwaruben, and Kwajenga has become very prime. And what has happened as a result of this is that there has been an increased demand for this land to enter the market and for this area to be converted to middle-income housing or other developments. So after many years, the original owners of this land are now beginning to seek for ways to evict the people who live here. So in the last few years, we have seen an increased threat of eviction. And that is how the Kenyan Federation and ourselves got involved in Mukurukwa Ruben and Mukurukwa Jenga slums. Towards the end of the year 2012, we began to see communities streaming into our offices with a similar complaint that they had been served with letters of eviction. And in many instances, they did not know whom the owners of the land, as the letters were often anonymous. So the first thing we did was to begin our investigations as to who the owners of the lands on which these two settlements were. And on more investigation, we discovered that these lands, like I had earlier indicated, were allocated to corporations in the early 1980s and early 90s for the purposes of constructing light industries. So under the conditions of the grants that they were allocated by the state, the allottees were required to prepare plans on the kind of light industries that they would develop within six months of the grant. They never did. They were required to present their plans to the county government for approval. They never did. And the Conditions of their grant clearly stipulated that in the event that they did not do this, then their grants under the law should have been cancelled. Their grants were never cancelled. There were also restrictions in, in regard to sale without development. These restrictions were never enforced by the state. So we had a situation where the initial lotees were taking this interesting public land and putting them on the market so that they could make profit out of them, and at the same time threatening the lives of hundreds of thousands of urban poor people. So what we did is we got organized and we went to court and challenged these particular grants. What we discovered is that the allottees had in many cases breached the conditions of their grants, in that they were not permitted to sell without development and now they were proceeding to put the land on the market in order to make profit out of the land and therefore the grants in many instances because of the breach of the basic conditions of the grant were irregular and unlawful. We went before the court 
and pled for these grants to be cancelled because under our new constitution, there are provisions for investigating titles that are irregularly or unlawfully allocated. So this is the prayer we went with before the court. And this case is now pending before the court for determination. What we realized also is that even though we did manage to get an order preventing the eviction of the people of Moku, that was not enough. That would not be enough. It would not change the living conditions of the people. The conditions of the very poor sanitary conditions under which the people live would still continue. So the women of Mukuru decided to organize themselves to begin to challenge the living conditions under which they lived. They said they were tired. Once the women decided to do something about the living conditions, they started mobilizing. They started mobilizing other women and they began to talk. They began to talk about issues that they didn't never talked about before, so unspoken things, things that were not spoken in the light of day. They began to speak about how they lived in their one-room shacks with their husbands and their children. They talked about how they were forced to use a basin in the dark of night because they could not venture outside their houses because of insecurity. So they were forced to use basins and pails to relieve themselves in front of their children. They talked about the lack of privacy, how difficult it was to change a sanitary pad in front of your children and your husband. So they talked about the indignity of being poor. They talked about the indignity of not having services. And they said that they wanted to live like other Kenyans. They wanted to be true citizens of their own country and that this way of living was not fit for human beings. And that's why they decided to go to the government and to request the minister for help, to set up an inquiry, to look into the public health conditions of their settlement and to see what could be done because the conditions under which they were living in were a threat not only to themselves, but to the whole city. So the women of Mukuru mobilized 17,000 signatures and have now prepared a petition to the, to the minister requesting him to set up an inquiry. The women's petition is supported by the work of Nairobi University, um, Strathmore University, Katiba Institute and the University of Berkeley. The three universities are looking at the living conditions of Mukuru and also seeing what propositions can be made to improve them. So we're not only just identifying the problems and preparing a situation analysis, which they are, but they're also going beyond that and trying to figure out how could we possibly improve this area? What kind of models do we need to develop that in the future, the state and the private sector and the people themselves can begin to redevelop this area into a living habitat? On top of this, there are, there are the women themselves and the women apart from just mobilizing themselves, have began to talk to different institutions. So they began to talk to the local women's organizations such as FIDA, CRU, COVA, and to build alliances, seeking to build alliances with the middle class woman as well, the Kenyan middle class woman, and basically asking them, do you know how your house help lives? Because every day, the women of Mukuru are the ones who stream out of the settlements of Mukuru and Kibera and move into the homes of the middle-class women. They look after their children, they clean their homes, they clean their offices. And then in the evening, they go and they live in a situation where they do not even have the privacy, where they do not even have a toilet to use. And basically the question the slum woman is asking the middle woman, the middle-class woman and the middle-class professional is, do you know how I live? Do you know that I cannot change my sanitary pad in private? It's this really fundamental human problems, beginning to share them and to seek empathy across the social and economic divides. 
The women reached out to international organizations, such as the UN Commission for Water and Sanitation. And basically, they are saying to the UN and other such institutions, you need to put a human face to your, to, to your campaigns. Advocate for us and support us as women on these very fundamental rights that cannot be compromised and that at the very heart of any nation's development. So they're moving forward with this, and very soon they'll be presenting this petition. And we are hoping that once they present this petition, an inquiry can be set up that looks not only at the sanitation issues, but looks into the land tenure issues. Because without resolving the land tenure and planning issues, the sanitation issues cannot be resolved. Because in Mukuru, there are no roads. They're just many little footpaths that are unpaved. So it would be very difficult to lay a pipe, even if somebody wanted to. How do you lay a pipe if there are no access roads? So even if the will is there, it is impossible to do so. So the very fundamental issues of going back into the settlements and replanning them so that they can become fit for human habitation is essential. And once you go into the area of replanning, then we must look at the issue of tenure. And then the next question then arises, how do you begin to plan in an area that is already held in by private individuals for another purpose, the development of light industries that were never developed? So again, we must begin to look at the tenure issues together with the water and sanitation issues. The women have also requested the Ministry of Lands to set this area as a special planning area because under the Physical Planning Act of our country, the government is in a position to set aside any area that has special problems, such as the problems that Mukuru has, and designate it as a special planning area, regardless of whether the land is public or private. And what the women are asking the state to do in all these requests is for the state to make a decision between landowners who are given government land as grants in order to develop light industries that they never did, and who are now using these grants to make profit by putting them on the market and selling them before development between they and the community of Mukuru that are a community of probably the most marginalized people within the city who have absolutely no access to land or services. That's the decision that the, the women are seeking from the state. And what they are saying to the state is that they're too pressed to wait. Thank you very much.